Yes, hello. That's right, it's Joe Hiff, Joyrider TV, live from the Wild Wind Boat Park. What is going on, you ask? And, uh, all right, I'll tell you what's going on. We've got Philip, he's adjusting. This is Philip from hello. Belgium. He's adjusting some main sheet blocks. Very fiddly stuff. <laughs> the new Arkans, definitely not as easy. Over here, we've got the Joyrider TV just overlaying some telemetry from a bit of speed sailing this afternoon, which will be uploaded later on uh, this evening, which will be very exciting. But um, yes, that's right, we're live for some Q&A. Hi Freya, Freya's travels, would you be currently located just around the corner? I don't know. Who else? Sorry, who else have we got? Ollie made it, fantastic. All right. Hello, James. Nice to have you on board as always. Uh, just gonna try to find a nice place to position uh, myself to start with. Um, hi, Matt. Hi, Kush. Matt's here in Sweden, yeah, FX1. Nice, I think we did, you were on Show Us Your Cat, weren't you? With Quite a tasty looking FX1, I seem to remember. Hi Chris, sup? Hi Damien. Always great to have Mozambique on board. Um, all right, everyone is tuning in. This is very nice. I am ready. So uh, in at this time, what I can let you know is this afternoon has been absolutely cooking. Hopefully by the end. Oh, very nice. Yeah, we look forward to seeing that, Chris. Hi, Russell. Taking the rest of the week off. What a great idea. Um, yeah, I'd be excited too. 46 boats and windsurfers in Texas. Oh, um, someone was commenting on one of the videos earlier today saying that they couldn't find any good lakes to sail on in Texas. Um, there we go. Answers on a postcard. Steve. Yeah, Steve's made it to a Q&A session. Congratulations, Steve. Great to have you on board. Okay, Chris, I'll get them to get in touch because, all right, have we, sorry, have we got, just tuning in, Anton, we want to see some 470 or 505 sailing. Yeah, um, that would be pretty sweet, but unfortunately we don't have those type of boats here. In fact, Matt's, yes, you label probably the sickest looking FX1 on the planet. I do remember that and I sort of remember getting in trouble with other FX1. Hi Dean, nice to have you on board. Always good to be down under. <laughs> um, oh, never summer. Tofino, BC, Canada, nice to have you on board. When do we see your mastery finished? Yeah, I've been mean to get round to, um, to actually finish the job but other things keep coming up uh, that prevent me from finishing the tornado um, so I'm awfully confused at the moment sort of walking backwards and forwards maybe I should just uh, find a good spot and a good spot I think is gonna be just here for now yeah so it has been absolute champagne conditions here in Vasiliki once again. Some very lucky people here out on holiday with us this week. I think we've got about 20, whoa, 25 people. Hi, Dim. Got some nice questions for you. Oh my goodness. Hi, Jerry. Michigan City, Indiana. Nice. Nice to have you on board. Yeah, um, hold on, let's flip this around so you can see what's going on. Is it possible to heave to with an F-18 or Hobie 16? Yes, it is. Um, same, um, it's the same uh, principle as heaving two in a monohull. For those of you who don't know, heaving two basically means parking your boat. So what you do is you put your jib on the wrong side, uh, let the main sheet out or the main sheet and the traveller push the rudders away from you and the boat will just sit parked. It's a very popular uh, thing to do before the start of a race if you're parking. Put the jib on the wrong side. Nice way 
stay parked and it's very easy to get moving from there as well. All right, question number two, considering that not everybody has space to launch their boats from the beach, would it be possible to drive the boat out of a tight port with jib only? Um, depends on the wind direction and what sort of boat it is. Some boats have a mainsail which is quite difficult to hoist. So if you're able to get out with the sails up, I think that is always gonna be a lot easier. Um, on a catamaran, also, you can't sail upwind just on the jib. You can sail uh, upwind or downwind wherever you want, just on the main, but not on the jib. Um, yeah, so if you're in a tight launching space, then it's gonna just require all of your skills to get out, um, which I know it's not a very straightforward answer. You could sail out just under the jib, get your boat into the wind, uh, hoist the mainsail, and then get going. But it really depends on your situation, whether that is possible or not. So there you go. Um, Steve, when is Hobie gonna wake up and give you sponsorship? Best marketing they've got. Thank you, Steve. Um, I'm currently a little bit worried that I'm gonna get in trouble for copyright on the t-shirts that I've been making. So uh, hope, hopefully the first step will, oh, no worries, Dim, uh, it's a pleasure. Um, yeah, hopefully the first step with Hobie Cat is that they don't um, punish me for promoting uh, Hobie Cats around the world um, because I've put a picture of one on the t-shirts that I make. Uh, just like there, picture of a Hobie 16, um, which is quite nice. Um, just promoting the Hobie 16. Dr. Freshner, you're the best sailor who's break. Oh, you're too kind, doctor. Um, thanks for tuning in. Let us know, we'll all switch to NACRA. Oh no, um, let's not get hasty. Just change it a little. Yeah, um, I think all I've got to change is the insignia. Hi, Joel from Spokane, Spokane, Spokane. Uh, nice to have you on board. Yeah, I think um, maybe what I need to do is just stop using the Hobie H on the sail and just have the outline of the boat will, um, will be okay. Um, it's why I've held back from, I've got all these new designs with all of the classic sail colors, um, but I've held off putting them on the website because I'm a bit scared, because that is quite blatantly just taking something from Hobie and um, writing Joyrider on it and then uh, putting it on the t-shirt. Uh, and I really don't want to get in trouble because uh, I try to be well behaved wherever I can. Um, anyway, what else has been happening here? Yeah, have had an absolute, how far from the beach would you go with a Hobie 16? go quite a long way I reckon um, depends on yeah de personally all right let's have a look okay I'd be if it wasn't for the regulations saying I'm not allowed uh, you could see over there those are the islands that's Ithaca and that one's Kefalonia um, I'd be quite happy to sail to Kefalonia and that is about something like 15 miles across there. Um, I'd be quite happy to sail over there on a Hobie 16, but before I'd set off, I would give the boat a really thorough inspection. Um, one thing that would give me a lot more confidence to sail that far away from the beach is that we've just replaced all the rigging, because um, rigging will fail you at some point and if you're miles away from shore uh, that is quite a bad thing to happen um, but because the 16 is a very strong boat and it's not it's not particularly likely that the hulls or the beams are gonna 
fail you. There's a Miami to Cuba race here, 90 miles. I want to do that. That sounds amazing. It's so about five to seven miles. Yeah, five to seven miles should be all right. Also consider the wind direction. If the wind is offshore, then going a long way away from um, land is a poor idea. Whereas if the wind is onshore, you know that if, any, let, let's say your mast comes down, um, then the wind is gonna blow you back to your, well, to land. Ever sail with walkie talkies? Not so much. Um, we take VHF radios sometimes, but because we've got safety boats here, we don't usually do that. Um, during lockdown, when I didn't have a safety boat, I did take my telephone in a dry bag out in case anything happened, uh, which I think was a good idea. Hey, well spotted, Steve. Yeah, we've got... Make it sense mover. Is that uh, Connie? I don't quite get what you... Uh, maybe you pressed return before you'd finished uh, saying what you're saying. Yeah, thanks, Steve. Yeah, I've got a new range of hats. No copyright issues there, I think. Um, embroidered. These are in the local stock in Vasiliki in Greece, so they'd be sent out from here. I think the going rate is it's either 20 or 25 euros, I can't remember, uh, plus postage, which would be another five euros to Europe, maybe a bit more to the rest of the world. But these are rare and not mass produced. So get them while they're hot. Can't find the new merch online. Yeah, in the online store, I think there's a page called um, Other Stuff. Maybe I need to um, sort it out a bit better. All right. Yeah, um, James, if you let me know more about this Cuba race, I am absolutely mad for doing that. Um, that I don't know how I'd be able to do that or how I would get the time. Um, yeah, so Steve, I'll try to um, sort out the shop a little bit to make it a bit easier to navigate. All right, here's Jeff from Gear Report. Should I take the motor mount off the Sea Scouts Hobie 16 first, light, first mount like this I've seen? I would say yes, take that mount off unless you are going to be using a motor. If you're going to be using a motor, then of course having a mount for a motor is of course a good idea. Um, but if you're not going to use it, then take it off. Steve says, need a lid. Yes, you do. Connie, oh, here we go. Move the traveler over the midline to the luff. Oh no, um, all right. Okay, so I think what Connie is saying there is should he ever move the traveler across the center line of the beam to the windward side like you might do on a yacht? Um, and the answer to that would be no on a catamaran like what we're using here. Um, let's call them beach catamarans. You'd never move the traveler any further upwind than the center. Um, okay. How full is Club Bass? Club Bass is not full very much at all at the moment. Uh, pretty quiet over there just now. In fact, we can take a stroll down towards the beach and you can see some uh, windsurfing action. Um, flipping this round. Are we flipping this round? Okay, so just there, that is Club Bass which is the finest windsurfing establishment in the world. Uh, they've got the best equipment, best instructors, and uh, one of the best locations in the world for windsurfing. Um, and uh, I hope the wind noise isn't too bad, by the way. Uh, just walking up wind at the moment. Um, so here we are, here's the action at the moment. We've probably got about 25 knots of wind and 
windsurfing has become the main activity on the water just now so there we go okay just scrolling back there's also a daytona to miami race that sounds great as well um i would love to come to america and do some sailing there um difficult to do at the moment okay all right just scrolling back a bit all right we've got robin love your videos you've motivated me to get back out on the water again yes that is one of the intentions of what i'm doing here is getting people into it um perhaps renewing a bit of enthusiasm that may have dwindled in the past it certainly hasn't been a constant journey for me with my catamaran sailing um for a while there's pirate sam he's got a yellow board and a green shirt um yeah so um it did drop a little bit my enthusiasm but then rediscovering the uh, hobie 16 and getting into tornado racing really lit it on fire for me and then making the videos lit it on fire for me as well so let's just see where we are here okay steve when assembling the cats is there a left and right hull oh yes there is okay Let's see how we can identify this. Should we go and have a look? Um, the nearest that I have here is we've got a Hobie 15 and a Hobie 14, two quite different types of catamaran, but we're gonna check them out. So, I think on the Hobie 15, it is quite obvious which is the inside and the outside. So things we can look for to identify one of the clearest ones is where is the shroud anchoring point um, so uh, it will always be on the outside of the hull that is one point what else could we look at to find um, if it's got any graphics on the hulls or stickers they would generally be on the outside um, and then just the contours of where the beams attach like on the 15 here, um, there is a shape for the cutout. Um, if the hull has got molded tracks, they will be on the inside. Switching to the Hobie 14 here, with the Hobie 14 and 16, what we have, because we've got an asymmetric hull, the outside of the hull, perhaps if we look from the back, it will be a bit clearer. The outside of the hull is um, very straight and flat and the inside of the hull is very curved. So on a Hobie 14 or 16, um, that is how we know uh, which is which. Okay, there we go. I hope that, yes, double thumbs up. I'll take that as a, that was a good answer, okay scrolling back uh -huh, uh -huh. this is my sort of question today from martin 25 who is here um martin 25 has been sailing the c2 all afternoon i think he's been having quite a lovely time um i went 23.15 knots today on the Hobie 16 and there will be video evidence of that uploaded later on this evening because um, I'll just have to put the video together first and then after putting the video together I'll have to upload it on the Greek clockwork internet um, which does take a little while or in fact I'm gonna just think positioning is everything all right um, yeah, there's been some great sailing here today. 
Um, oh, I'll just jump in there. Uh, too much wind for a sail right now. No, not too much wind for a sail right now, but the reason there's no boats out is because um, people have been sailing for, well, since about two o'clock, 2.30 this afternoon in the strong wind. It's now five, it's now nearly six. So that's like three and a half hours of high wind sailing, which is enough for most people, especially while they're on holiday. Uh, so everybody's pretty much had enough on the boats today and it's quite clearly time for a drink. Uh, all right, scrolling back. All right, we've got Connie. How can I contact the Villas? All right, if you're talking about coming out here and booking somewhere to stay, then all you need to do is, what would be the easiest way? You can contact, write this down, Simon, that's a name, Simon, at wildwind.co dot uk and ask him about booking um to come out on holiday here with accommodation sailing and good times thrown in because uh, that's what everybody deserves all right scrolling back uh, okay got russell um if you were to come to the usa for sailing what would it take to bring you here an event a location you'd really like to go to great questions i like the sound of that um uh, data what was the first one um we were going somewhere to cuba um that would really tickle me um a lot um but the thing that would bring me to the usa would be um firstly the expense of going there is going to be miami to cuba yes that is what i'm into definitely i would definitely like to come and do a race like that or um maybe is it the Worrell 1000 i would absolutely love to come and do that but um i'd need some fairly significant sponsorship to be able to afford to do that because i'm just a poor sailing instructor here living on a greek island um, every evening for dinner I get my fishing rod out and I try to catch a fish so that my family can eat um, and then and then during the day I sail boats and make videos but um, yeah it's the expense of coming to America but also also I wouldn't be allowed to come on my own I'd have to bring my small family with me um, but also the difficulty is is um, the time of year. Like, for example, is Florida good in the winter months? Never seen you eating a big fat burger at Alex's. Okay, maybe I did that once uh, or twice. Thank you, Steve, for just blowing the whistle there. All right, scrolling back. But I, it's, it's on the cards. But um, time of year, somebody let me know what the season's like in Florida. I know they had the 16 Worlds there, which was that, um, was that in January? I think so. Um, James needs a hat. Okay, shipment of hat coming, shipment of hats coming to the USA. If you're in the USA and you want a hat, get in touch and um, I'll send a load of hats to James um, and then James can distribute amongst the whole of the USA if James is happy with that. Okay, so scrolling back. There's some interesting questions here, I think. Uh, scrolling back. Have you experienced on a NACRA F20C. No, unfortunately not. Um, most of all of the catamarans that I've been sailing for the last 20 years or so have been Hobies and 
Hobies and Tornadoes. That is pretty much it. Uh, and of course the good old C2, which is an absolute bad boy. Oh, hold, hold on, we've got news just in. What season's in Florida? It's 85 degrees. Also, always. Okay, thanks Eric for the info there. All right, scrolling back. Uh, okay. All right, scrolling back. Um, flatter side in. I think we're back to the which way round did the holes go. So what I wanted to say, this is Jeremy here. Uh, well, Jeremy, who's asking the question. What I want to say is a 16 too much for someone who's never sailed. My father always wanted to buy a 14, never got to it and passed in April. Very sorry to hear that, Jeremy. Um, uh, keep watching your videos makes you think of them. Oh, well, I'm glad to be, if that's helping, I'm glad to be helping. But um, a 16 is gonna present some challenges if you've never sailed before. But um, if, when you're learning to sail in the early stages, as long as you don't go and try to smash it in a lot of wind straight away, then there's no reason why you shouldn't learn to sail on a Hobie 16. It is a very good boat. And the great thing with a Hobie 16 is it will take you from your first steps on the water right through to 30 years um, on from there where you've been sailing every day, great times. And the Hobie 16 will keep um, providing you with very, very good fun sailing. And you could take anybody out on a 16, whether they are very experienced, they'll find the 16 an amazing ride. Or if there's somebody who's never sailed before, um, they can sail on a 16 as well as a crew. So the 16 is a great choice. Um, you mentioned the 14 there as well. 14, not such a good choice. The 14 is an absolute animal and it's only for the brave or the very, very light. The 14 is very difficult to sail because of the low volume hulls. But like James says, Hobie 16 is a boat for life. Okay, scrolling back. Okay, I'm coming on to everybody's questions, just answering them in order of which they came in. Scrolling back. Okay. Um, okay, Stephen says, if I was there, I'd be on the water till it's dark. Good on you, Stephen. Um, the wind drops before it gets dark, but we should come out and, uh, and do it. Okay, scrolling back. All right. Um, all right, scrolling back, there's some juicy stuff here. Um, Cormac, Ireland sailing. If that is, would I come to Ireland sailing? Yes, I would love to. Um, some great sailing to be had in Ireland. I've seen evidence of that. Um, Cormac says, C2, or I think that's probably autocorrect, or Hobie Tiger. Um, I'd say, depends who you are. For me, the C2 is an absolute weapon and it is, it's got to be the best. All right, I can't say with any, I can't say for sure it's the best F-18 because that new NACRA Evolution looks absolutely ridiculous. I'd love to try one of those. But compared to the Tiger, the C2 is like the next generation of F-18s from the Tiger. The Tiger is much more accessible to more people because of the shorter foils, which means it's not quite as critical 
to get what you're doing with your foils right and you're less likely to hit the bottom as well because they're not as long. Um, the Tiger is a very strongly built boat as well. Um, and I'm sure the C2 is just as strong, but because of the longer foils means it's a bit more fragile. Um, so for your first F18, Hobie Tiger is perfect. But if you want to go out and race F18, the C2 is one you could go and win some races in. There we go. That is what I think there. Make a, I will make a video, comparison video at some point. Um, there we go. Here we go, Rodrigo. Nice to have you on board. Which rope diameter should I use on a Hobie 16 downhaul six to one system with the 22 mil blocks? Uh, five mil is good. Um, ideally, you want to use a five mil rope, which has got a Dyneema core so it doesn't stretch. Uh, but five mil seems to run very nicely in those blocks. Uh, there you go. Okay, C2 or Hobie. Yeah, and um, if you if you want to ask C2 or Wildcat, again, I'd choose the C2. It's a more modern design. It's a more recent design, and the Australians have absolutely nailed it. Well done, Australia. Okay, um, and we've got Eric. Hi ho everyone, the Hobie 16 I got for free is coming along, just finished the rudder. Oh, because you've got the EPOs on there I believe that you were renovating, is that right? Um, I think you were fixing some EPO rudders. Okay Steve, a plus one for the hats. Okay, send me an email if you're after a hat. Um, I'll. It should be reasonably easy to find on the website about the hats. Um, if you go to other stuff, I think it's under, and then there'll be a page that just shows the picture of all the different colors of hats that I've got. Uh, let me know what you're after. Okay, we've got Pablo. How long is the wild wind season this year in Greece? Okay, um, as it stands, it looks like we're gonna be open until about mid-October. Um, we're of course open at the moment so we started at the start of July through to mid-October so we've lost about half of the season uh, and um, but everything is going extremely well at the moment. Uh, I think for everybody who's coming out here it's being an excellent way to kind of leave the troubles of the world behind and come and have a great time sending it on a sailing boat in uh, these absolutely ridiculous champagne conditions. Okay. What seasons? Okay, I see what you're saying, Eric. Um, Florida is always on. Okay. C2 or NACRA 18? Yeah, I think I'm, yeah, I've, we've, we've done that one. Okay. Um, yeah, so without trying the NACRAs, I couldn't say with any kind of authority uh, which way I would go, but I'm certainly very impressed with the C2. It's an absolute machine. Steve says, love the show us your cat. How about a Hobie rescue series? Guys need to find some neglected cats. Yeah, the, the neglected cats have kind of been getting a bit of a look in in Show Us Your Cat of late. I think we're going to have another one, a real humdinger of a res restoration project this um, uh, this uh, Sunday, which I think you're going to enjoy. So I think the restoration projects are in Show Us Your Cat. And to be honest, I'm not ready to take on another series at the moment, Show Us Your Cat is, out of everything that I do, Show Us Your Cat takes a lot longer to put together than everything else. Um, from uh, getting the email, uh, going through the email, getting the pictures, the video, all of that. And yeah, it takes a little while, but I do enjoy doing it, of course. 
um, and I hope that everybody enjoys the finished results. And big thanks to Jeff at Gear Report, who's been doing an excellent job. I hope you'll agree um, with the roving reporting. Um, if you are in the States and you want a roving reporter sat on your boat, then just uh, check out Jeff at Gear Report and um, he could come and sit on your boat with a camera and that will be fun. Okay, scrolling back. Okay, oh there we are, Jeff is doing some restorations for the Sea Scouts there. Hobie 16 or Dart 16? Another fine question, Cormac. Um, the, the Hobie 16 and the Dart 16 are two completely different animals. The Hobie 16 is a snarling beast, whereas the Dart 16 is a lot more friendly. Um, not, no, that's probably the wrong way to put it. The Dart 16 is a boat that's designed to be used by youth sailing or beginner sailors. Whereas the Hobie 16 is a boat which, like we've said, is for life, will take you through your entire catamaran sailing life and be there for you all the way through. The Hobie 16 is very, 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 very fast. The Dart 16 is quick, but it's not a wolf in wolf's clothing like the 16 is. Uh, but if you're looking for your first catamaran, and you have got choices, the Dart 16 would be a fine choice there. Um, but the Hobie 16 would also be a fine choice, but the Dart 16 would be much easier to start with. On top of that, the Dart 16 is made of plastic, um, uh, what's it called, roto molded, um, which is a fair bit heavier, um, but very strong and it will last forever. Uh, whereas the Hobie 16 is made of fiberglass, but it's very, very strong, but a bit lighter and more sophisticated. Definitely more power on the Hobie 16. Okay, Eric has a question. Could you, or have you heard of anyone sharpening the trailing edge of a rudder on a 16? to a razor-like point. Um, no, if, if you made the trailing edge of your rudder blade really sharp, what you're gonna get is more of that, um, that noise when you start going fast, because that sharp edge will start vibrating like that. This is an exaggeration. And it's that vibration on the trailing edge of your rudder blade that makes that, that noise when you start going fast. Um, what you actually wanna do is if you've got a really sharp trailing edge on your rudder blade and it makes that noise when you're going fast, you want to just flatten it off a little bit. So you've got, this is an exaggeration, instead of the rudder blade coming like that, you want it to come like that with a flat edge on the back and then you won't get that vibration. That vibration is gonna slow you down and cause that high pitched noise. So there we go. Rudder hum. Yeah, rudder hum. There we are. Okay, scrolling back. The guy said it improved top speed with it. I, yeah, I don't, I, I disagree, but that's just my opinion and um, from my experience. But anything that makes a noise uh, that's in the water is caused by vibrations and those vibrations are gonna slow you down, I think. All right. All right, Steve in the UK, RS Aero Nationals sold out in four hours. Wow. That's what happens when you starve everyone of sailing for a fair while and then you put on a competition, everybody is hungry to get in there. Uh, well done to the RS class in the UK. Uh, very good. 
All right, scrolling back. Scrolling back, scrolling back. Okay, thank you, Rodrigo. Thanks for the question. Okay, James, Greg, Dave and I are planning a trip to Wildwind next year, yes. Along with Eleanor and Ilya from Moscow. What? This is gonna be amazing to have you guys out here. Yes, great choice. It'll be great to finally meet you guys out here and share some of this amazing sport out here with you. Uh, just keep me informed on when you're planning to come out. Great stuff. Okay, scrolling back. Uh, okay, scrolling back. Great stuff. Uh, okay. Steve, have you considered the live walk around consulting calls via Zoom? Okay, yeah, I think if you're talking about um, would I consider doing like a one-to-one -one consultancy kind of service where uh, with Zoom or Skype or FaceTime or something like that, then yes, I've, what I've done is I've included it as one of the benefits of the new tiers on Patreon. So if you want to be able, if you want uh, me to have a look at your boat using the miracle of technology where you point your telephone at the area that you'd like me to talk about with you and um, we can do that but of course I haven't got time to just do that with absolutely everybody because um, uh, I've got reasonable, a reasonable amount on here just in my normal work here at Wildwind um, but if you sign up for one of the new tiers on Patreon uh, then you can get in touch and we can schedule a let, what did you call it? Uh, an ex, a call, a video call where I can have a look at your boat and we can go through uh, what it is that you would like to look at or um, talk about the actual sailing technique a bit as well. So that is all possible. Check out my Patreon page if you want to know more about that. Okay, scrolling back. Jeff says, can you make shirts in breathable synthetic material? Don't wear cotton. Cotton is so old fashioned, man. Um, yes, that is what all these uh, beaters that I wear are made of, this synthetic material. It's kind of like a loose fitting rash vest kind of material, uh, which is very lightweight, good in the heat. Uh, also, you can wear it in the water. Doesn't get heavy like cotton does and dries pretty quickly. I'll see about putting something in that material in the online store or otherwise um, I have got some items in my what I call my local store like the hats and the beaters um, which can be available I'll try to get all a bit more organized in that department in the coming days great question but I'll make it known I'll put it on the Facebook page uh, when I get the new t-shirts in the store uh, like a dry fit that's the one Steve's into it James is into it um, it's good um, Hobie 16 is the F16 of the water aha Ted you, you are right of course but the F16 of the water is also the F16 um, if you didn't know about the Formula 16 class, um, I think most people are at least aware of the Formula 18 class of which the C2, the Hobie Tiger, the Wildcat, the Nacra Evolution are all boats within that class. There's also the F16 class, which is 16 feet long and is, has a very similar outline to the F18, but the boat is just smaller, lighter, and geared towards people who are not as heavy, or with the F16, you've got the added bonus of being able to race either two up or single-handed. So the F16 is a really attractive class 
to get into. We were meant to be having an F-16 here um, this year, the, the Viper from good old design. But unfortunately, because we lost half a season, we couldn't afford to get one here. But hopefully, if all is well for next year, then we will get one and we'll be able to do some F-16 videos, which excites me a lot. So there we go. That was a long answer to something that I don't even think was a question. Uh, okay, scrolling back. It wasn't a question, it was a statement. Okay, JB, my wife's watching. We have a 14 and an 18, nice choice. Can you tell her, Faustino, sorry for pronunciations wrong there, why we need to fill the gap with a 16, oh my goodness. Okay, yeah, these boats really do hit different angles. That's not an easy one to answer. What, okay, if it was just a 14, why do you need a 16? Bit easier because you can sail with two people on the 16, whereas on the 14, to sail with one adult and one very small child would be all right, or two small adults would be okay, but any more than that, and the 14's not gonna carry the weight very well. But, um, you know, you've made it difficult there by having an 18 already. Um, the 16 is a fair bit lighter than the 18, and perhaps the 16 might be better for uh, taking on holiday. It's a tough one. Uh, 16 has got much less sheet load for the crew than the 18. Pulling back, that's the best I can do there at this time. Got more questions coming in. Rudder hum. Oh yeah, we're into the shirts. Okay, I'll get onto the shirts. How do I overcome the paranoia of a solo sail on a Hobie 16 or solo sail period? Hmm. I would say you could overcome that by going out with light wind. Um, if you go out with light wind and you've already got experience sailing a Hobie 16, then I think it should take the sting out of it a bit and you should feel a bit more confident if the wind is light and you know that there's not much that could go wrong. Um, if you check out the video on uh, writing the 16 using a bag, using the bag method, uh, you can write a 16 single-handed. And I think the bag method, I know I didn't ever make this poll video because I just ran out of time to come up with the design for putting the writing pole on the boat. But if, get a bag, here we go, this is what you could do. Get the bag, watch the video, get the bag. Then in shallow water, see if you can tie the boat to something in perhaps zero wind. Uh, like you could even put an anchor out or something tied to a tree, just anything with light wind so that the boat's in the water. Um, and then using the bag method, have a go at pulling the boat up from being capsized. And then once you've done that, hopefully your confidence should be increased uh, knowing that you can bring the boat back upright from capsized, if you were to capsized. If you were to capsize, sorry. Um, I'd say that would be the first step. Okay, scrolling back. Good question though, Jake. Um, Ralph, Aussie jib or regular? Is the Aussie jib worth the extra money? I say no. I think the much better upgrade is to upgrade your downhaul to the six to one and perhaps look at upgrading your, if you've got old main sheet blocks, upgrade to the modern style six to one Harken main sheet system. It's expensive, but it's really good and it lasts for a very, very long time. Um, but I'd say uh, upgrading to the Aussie system, jib halyard is also gonna mean drilling holes in your mast and 
drilling more holes in your mast is more of an invitation for your mast to leak. Having a mast that doesn't leak is very important. So there you go. There you go. I hope that saved you a couple of couple of uh, euros or whatever whatever uh, currency you're using. That's a good one, Damien. Yes, go alone, but with other boats and not too much wind. Good idea. Ever, says Eric. Uh, Russell, long sleeve rash guard for over top of life jackets with logo on the back. Yeah, I might even... Um, Yes, a great shout. I might talk to my friends at Rasher, that is spelled R-A-S-H-R, -R, um, who make rash vests which are made from uh, reclaimed plastic waste uh, from the sea. So doing their bit for the, for the effort against plastic. Um, but they make really, really good rash vests, uh, rash guards and um, they made me my bad boy 94 rash vest which I absolutely love um, and perhaps I could do something with those guys so I'll be in touch with them great suggestion thanks Russell um, when's the next tornado race the tornado worlds were meant to be at the end of September this year actually in Greece which is very convenient but at the moment whether or not that is going ahead is still a little bit up in the air because if the world are not able to attend the worlds then it's not going to be a great event so um we're still there's still a question mark hanging over that but of course if it's going on i will be there with bells on on bad boy 94 uh so i should hopefully have the mast up by then Ever do a video on rudder shape, trailing edge, leading edge quality? No, I never did actually. Um, no, but I could. Yeah, there's not a huge amount to say on that, but um, yeah, I'll put it on the list. Thanks, Eric, for the suggestion. I have a Hobie 16 and one of the hulls has a soft spot on the top front of the hull. Any advice? Yeah. I'm not really focusing too much on uh, boat repair stuff here because I'm not an expert in boat repair. But the way to fix that would be to cut a, a hatch in the hull um, so that you can get to the inside of the hull so you can fix it from the inside. But um, certainly one to talk to a boat builder about uh, there. Sorry, I can't help you on that any more than that. Okay, Al from Canny Moor. I'm a little nervous about getting on the Hobie 16 up on one pontoon while on the trapeze. Any questions? Okay, flying the hull we're talking about here. Yeah, um, practice flying a hull, sat on the boat first check out the how to fly a hole video if you haven't seen it already um, and practice flying a hole sat on the boat then practice just trapezing on the helm if you're talking about helming on the trapeze um, but without flying a hull and then combine the two so like Damien said before baby steps to build up your confidence is the best thing you can do so get used to flying the hull first and then perhaps a bit later on get used to trapezing uh, not flying the hull and then put the two together that's what I'd suggest and like with everything don't go out in too much wind too soon which could uh, do something negative to your confidence send it and don't stop controlling the boat Eric good advice there Yes, um, always your focus, whenever you're sailing, should be on controlling the boat. That is the first one. Steve asks, could Wild Wind ever host a global race? Well, funny you should ask there, Steve. Um, back in 2001, we hosted the Hobie 16 Europeans. Um, 
yeah, the Hobie 16 Europeans back in 2001. And it was attended by, I think we had 120 boats here, uh, 16s. The racing was right out there, quite a spectacle. But would we ever do anything again? Takes a lot of work. And because we're in the tourism business, it's kind of like we'd have to stop our normal things from going on to a certain degree to host an event of that size. So it is tricky, but would be great. It would have to be, maybe we could do a, a joyrider event, a joyrider speed sailing week. Um, like um, where we could do it like a, a sweepstake where you pay an entry fee certain part of the entry fee goes to the running of the event like all the overheads and then a percentage of the entry fee goes into a pot where which gets split up to different categories where the winner of which gets prize money i'd certainly like to be uh in that event that would be brilliant all right scrolling back I'm gonna wind this up soon by the way, because I've been going nearly an hour now and it's definitely time for a drink. Um, okay, so is it all right if I say no more questions, please? Because I'll just answer the ones that are already there and then, um, is that okay? And then if you'd like to email me with a question, perhaps this will be a new format coming soon, is if you email me with a question, I will reply to that question by putting together a Q and I, a Q and A video, um, a Q and A video where I answer people's questions rather than typing the answer like I have been. I'll put together a short video response and put those into a Q and A answers video, which might be nice. Okay, just coming back. Scrolling back, Manuel asks, could you please talk about the different types of halyard locks that exist and are there circumstances under which you would not use the lock? Now that is a great question. There's three types of halyard lock which are generally used in catamarans. One, have I got any masts down? No. If I had a mask down of each type, that would be very good. But I'm just gonna visualize this using my hands. First type, first type, and probably the most common type on a catamaran is the ring and hook. This would be like on a Dart 18 or a Tornado, uh, like on most Formula 18s, on the Hobie 18, boats like that, um, where on the shackle that goes to the top of the mainsail, there is a ring with a shackle attached. <laughs> okay, this is a port. I think this is pretty good. So there's a ring. At the top of the mast, there's a hook that sticks out like this. So as the ring goes up, it locates over the hook and that's what holds the sail up. Then to get the sail out, you pull it up rotate the mast and then pull it down. Sounds easy, can be quite fiddly. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of that method, of that system, because it is quite fiddly. Um, but that would be one method. Another method would be, which is, I think it's unique to Hobie, which is like on the Tiger, the FX1, um, don't know what else it's on actually. Uh, the Hobie Fox, uh, where at the top of the sail, there's a hook like this. And then actually in the top of the mast, there is a hole. The sail goes up and then you rotate the mast, drop the hook into the top of the mast. And then this is, in my opinion, the best system of all for holding your sail up because it is actually the only one that actually puts your sail right at the top of the mast, which makes it a lot more efficient. You don't have that turbulence caused by weirdness going on at the top of the mast. 
very efficient system, but people really don't like it because it can be a bit tricky to get the hook in. But with um, a bit of practice and just by looking up the mast becomes easy to hook in. Third system, and that is the system of the Hobie 16, Hobie 14, Hobie Pacific, Hobie 15, is where on the front of the mast we have a fork like this on the front of the mast. Then on the wire halyard, there's a little nugget. The nugget goes up beyond the fork, you drop the nugget in, and then that stops the sail from dropping down. Uh, on the Hobie Sick, on that method, the weight of the sail is supported by about a foot of wire, which is more prone to breaking than the other two methods. So, um, in that way, it's not as good a system. It's very easy to use, and with that system, it is designed so that you can hoist the sail and feed it in simultaneously. Would I ever sail without? hooking the sail in no in a word unless we go back to the earlier question of could you hoist the sail on the water uh, after sailing out of a marina or something on the jib perhaps in that situation if it's really difficult to hook the sail in maybe you'd use an alternative method to keep the sail up but the re oh yes thanks kush um but the reason catamarans use a hook or a lock to hold the sail up is um, because the amount of downhaul we want to pull on we don't want to have a stretching halyard meaning that the sail comes away from the top of the mast so by having a hook it means we don't risk that there we go that's a very long explanation to that question that's all i've got okay scrolling back thanks for the question manuel Scoop Dugan, when we start going about six knots, my 1979 rudders start humming. Is that normal? Yeah, probably. Um, depends on the construction of the rudder blades. There's a chance you've got that. Right, I'll. <coughs> cool. Okay. Here we've got the two most likely types of rudder blade. Uh, one is these ones which are made from fiberglass, they're nice rudder blades. Uh, these are called the white knot rudder blades, which you probably wouldn't have on a 79. What you're more likely to have is, is this, what have we got here? Oh, that's a good one. Okay, uh, not that one. Okay, not to say that it's not a good one. Oh yeah, these ones, which... Hobie call them Lexan rudder blades, which are what they used to use, which when you, when you knock on it, can you hear that? Sort of sounds a bit metallic when you knock on it. These rudder blades make a, a low humming noise, whereas those rudder blades make a high pitch whining noise. Um, and yes, it is quite common. What you can do, like we said before, is just very gently rub down the trailing edge of your rudder blade just to square it off a bit. And that means that should stop vibrating, which could help to prevent that noise. Oh, you've got this one. Yeah, to so just lightly rub down the trailing edge, see if that makes a difference and get rid of that noise okay scrolling back okay yes i think we're there joyrider on site speed stick yes yes that's right steve i'm into it as well um i'll flip this around okay yeah thanks scoop nice glad i could help there uh with a i think that was a reasonable answer to a very good question um yeah, so actually in September every year, this is how the speed stick started. We do the September speed stick here, where we actually have a leaderboard up. If you look on the speed stick videos, the early ones are actually from 
the September speed stick with the leaderboard, um, but we weren't doing it for money. Let's do it for money. Let's get some cash. Um, not saying that because I think I might win. Uh, okay, maybe I am. Uh, okay. Okay. Around Robin would work. Yeah, I think so too. All right, so there we go. Going to wrap that up there. Thanks very much for tuning in. If you're watching this later on, thanks very much for watching. Um, I hope there's been some in interesting stuff here. Um, like I said, if you've got any more questions, um, send them in an email or in a comment to any video. And I think I am going to start putting a video together answering questions, perhaps one a week. Um, <laughs> Um, yes, James, that's right, Amstel time. Okay, thanks very much, everybody, for watching. I think maybe it's not totally straightforward how to hit the like button on the live video. I don't know. I haven't actually watched one for a bit. Um, so there we go. Yeah, we'll see you next week with some more Q&A. Um, yeah, don't forget to tune in later on this evening. Ocean Wi-Fi. Thanks, mate. When do you do the next... Very good. Yeah, uh, every Wednesday at 5.30 Greek time, which is 4.30 Central European time, 3.30 UK time, anywhere else you'll have to do the maths. Um, yeah, that's about the size of it. So later on tonight, to see today's action from on the water with a, a 23 knot run on a 16, back on the 16 for the first time, sailing with somebody that was exciting yeah and send me an email if you want to get a hat or stickers or yeah thanks kush um or uh, a beta sort of like this um send me an email and i'll give you some information 